to make a new profile or something, but it was getting mad at me. But I just forgot to reinstall it. So so five minutes before I realized that, so I reinstalled it, but just it was being annoying with like trying to set it up with like the new account. I don't know. It was dumb. Remember that really uh, old episode from when I was a freshman where y'all were just like begging to put my girlfriend on the show and then we broke up like two months later? Yeah, it was quicker than that. I think it was like the Ooh. next week or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. Because then we asked yeah. again and you were like, no, we broke up like right after. This. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. I refuse to do the bit. I will never do the bit on this show. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'm the awkward third wheel this time. Love it. <laughs> I'll take it. It's, it's, a, it's a CH episode. Um, <laughs> it's two people with that's, that's, there's names that start with CH. I think the only two people I know who are, are CHers. Interesting. Might be. It's a Chandler and Chase. I guess C H A too. Hmm. Um, how are the Chas doing? The Chas, the Chas are doing decently. I just got back from Birmingham. I spent a week there for Thanksgiving. Is my because my family is there, um, and also Reese is there, um, and. I mean, Pat, I mean, it's, it is very weird being back in my apartment and it's like, God, I have to, I have to wake up for work tomorrow. I have to commute. Uh, don't I mean, it's not me. that bad, but still. How, how is the other CH doing? And also you, Daniel. <laughs> I know you're not a CH, but you can join in on the conversation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm unofficially, a, I'm, I'm not, I'm officially not a CH, so I don't know if I can. If I have say here, I don't know what the rules are. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, how, how, how things, you know, it's a, it's a society these days, you know, it's, you can't, uh, it, it's unofficial. It's like, you know, under the table. I, I don't want to be namist here, so I don't want to uh, <laughs> you know, cross any boundaries that I shouldn't. So go, go ahead, Chase. Oh, well, I'm doing pretty well now. You know, life is, life is moving pretty fast right now, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it always is moving pretty fast. What what's ha- I I have heard nothing. Well, first of all, like the only thing I hear from Daniel when when I come onto this podcast is that he's still doing vaguely nuclear things and just never really says anything else. And I don't know anything about you, Chase. Yeah, Chase's life is more interesting. Go ahead. I was going to ask vaguely nuclear things. I've not heard of these before. Uh, it's not. It's not supposed to be that vague. I well, I naturally I'm vague just because that's a problem I have. Um, I, I I'm I'm an operator at a nuclear power plant. That's really all. Ooh, very nice. I did well, not know that. Not that. It shouldn't be that vague. Any follow up questions? Should be that big. I already have more information than I had before. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is now. This is now the Daniel Silverstein interview experience. With We're turning it on its people. head. Yeah, didn't see that one coming, did you? I, I, I guess. I guess so. What, what do you guys need? What do you guys need to know? It's just I just do do nuclear stuff. That's just really it. Even then, a lot of my job is not nuclear. It's just like. <laughs> Power plants. Like, 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 like I can, like, I can talk about my job and say that it's aerospace stuff, but I can also go into more detail, right? I've, ne- I've never heard you explain, what, like, what you do. It's like I ask my dad, like, what he does. He works at a bank. I ask my dad, like, what he does on a daily basis, and he literally cannot answer the question. It's, it's like that. What do people at banks do on a daily basis? You know, <laughs> I don't know. What are they doing? They're, they're working eight hours a day, but what are they doing? What's what's the time going to? Like, like if you, if you're like at the desk, obviously, then you're like serving people. But if you're like in the yeah. back, what the the money comes in and the money comes out. I feel like you don't really need, <laughs> a lot of, <laughs> need anything else to manage that. And now you're, you're forgetting computers. about you're forgetting about the just servers full of Excel files that are in there somewhere. I guess so. You, you do need someone <laughs> to manage that. 
I don't know. Yeah, they're always typing. They're, they're like, they're, yeah. they're working on reports, I guess. You know, it, it feels like an office space gimmick. But Maybe. I don't know. What percentage of jobs do you think are just completely not necessary? Just like overall. Oh, my God. Um, well, i tell you, I guess my. Yeah, how un American can you get? Go ahead. I was gonna say, <laughs> fair. Well, in terms of necessity, right, I'm not sure any job is truly necessary the way that people are taught. Now, that's I a think, good point. I think that people get in this competition mode where it's like, well, my job is more important than, I don't know, a barista job or whatever the fuck. And I think people get where it comes from is people get comparing because it's like, fuck, I feel inadequate inside, right? And that's yeah, that's kind of where I, that I comes from. I certainly don't mean to like demean any like demean. Oh no no no. That, that's no. not really what I mean. I I mean more like what percentage of people go into work and truly accomplish like let like like you know they have like a job description of something like they're supposed to do, but they just like don't do it and no one notices. That's really that's more what. Oh. I mean. Job description? Oh my god, probably I'd go higher than 50% easy because the job description is some dude is like, ah shit, I need to hire for this position again. Okay, what was the old HR thing we posted on friggin' LinkedIn two years ago? Yeah, just copy paste that, throw in a new line because the new software upgraded and yeah, yeah, whatever, have the degree, whatever, have the experience, whatever, just we'll, we'll mold you to our job and do it i mean i'll be honest like i've totally forgotten my original job description because i've done vaguely similar things but it's just been a whole lot of whole lot of just flexibility i'd say so in terms of matching a job description gotta be pretty high up there yeah kind of same here i don't even i mean my the job description for for my current job was intentionally very vague kind of like daniel um, and like, I, I kind of just do what need, they just needed someone who was like vaguely knowledgeable in like vaguely engineering topics related to aerospace and like past that, it like really didn't matter. Uh, and they needed to be able to use MATLAB, which Georgia Tech obviously gave me. So like, and like, that was it. Like they, they don't really care. They, they really didn't care otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, GT, GT will beat Matt Lab into you now for sure. If there was one thing I can do, <laughs> it's Matt Lab. It's yeah. Matt. See, I guess I don't know. The, the secret, the great secret, the tech is hiding from people is you learn everything you need in the first year and a half, and oh. the rest of it is just fuck. We got to complete the rest of the four years. Gosh. All right, just just talk about planes for a while. Get get some professors just like. Doing- <laughs> Doing research, just get him to like talk about it. It'll it'll be fine. Like statics and and all of like the structures stuff. Like statics maybe a little bit, but like structural analysis, like the big aerospace class that everyone like complains about. Like no shot. Like I, I I'm literally like doing like loads work, and it just like it, it still never comes into play. It, it's all it's all done with the software. Yeah, I feel like software does, I mean, I'll be honest, like most of my job is moving things around in Tableau and having it do it for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, it's a huge time saver. And, you know, there's that feeling of like, God damn, this is easier than I thought it would be. Like, I worked that hard at GT for this. That's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at as well. Well, I mean, yeah. Not exactly. Cause it, it's 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 just a different kind of problem solving, I guess. It, yeah. Rather than like you know th- these big complicated equations, it's more like how do I hook up these three different like unrelated softwares and like make my job as easy as possible. It's really just like how do I cut down on the tedious work I could do. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Just just make what I need to do as efficient as possible. 
Yeah, a bit of a uh, different kind of optimization problem, honestly. Yeah. And, um, you know, the other thing, I, I will say, like, the original, originally, and I started the job a couple months in, I'm like, you know, some days, some days, this is actually so fucking easy. I can get my shit done in a couple hours. And oh. then I felt, I say, yeah. I, it was weird because I felt guilty for that. I was like, what? Why do I feel guilty for this? It's like, well, I spent, I busted my ass in high school and college, and I just naturally assumed, oh, that must mean work is going to require everything. No, 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 no. Work is the real, the quote unquote real world. What they don't teach you is the shit you, the skills you learn, they come up. They're mainly just background shit. The real world is dealing with life and work is a subset of life, right? Your job is the hard part of the – honestly, the harder part of the job for me has been dealing with people, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're always going to have coworker issues of some kind, whether good or bad. You're always going to have, oh, things are – you know, there's a delay or the economy is poor or, you know, there's these systemic things going on. And it's it's managing the human element there that, I mean, I'll admit I was I was quite underprepared for, but – at the same time, that's kind of part of a real job is, yes, you get to apply the skills you're taught. And frankly, rarely do you get a one to one match from all the garbage you have in your head to, you know, the job. It's always a mixture of, you know, your skills technically and the people relations. And that's that's the part that I think we kind of undersell to people throughout the educational process for sure and i mean there's an attempt to kind of throw things like that in with like you know there's group projects and stuff there's senior design (laughs) senior design is definitely the closest i got to what i'm doing now but still it's it's never going to compare to just like and i mean i work for a relatively small company um and it's it's just dealing with things that like you know, things that are outside of my control, right? Like, yeah, from super simple things to like, oh, the HR person was like having trouble, like mailing my check to me and like having to sort that issue out to like actual job things where we have to communicate with our clients and like all. Um, any any thoughts, thoughts, Daniel? Do you get paid by Mail by check in the mail. Only okay. What happened is the the first right. paycheck was in the mail, and then saying. the rest are so now it's direct deposit. But the first check was in the mail for some logistics reason, I guess. Yeah, they they I think okay. that's standard for a lot of companies. I know that was my experience where it's like here's your first in the mail. Maybe it's just like to establish a mailing address or. Something Probably like, something know. like that. Um, but what? So what happened actually uh, with with, um, with with my first paycheck is uh, the HR person she went to um, uh, mail out like a bunch of things for the company, and she like she you know had like all, like all of the mail just in her arms I guess, and it fell into the crack of like the door of her car. And she just didn't notice it. And so she looked all around her car to make sure she didn't drop it, but she didn't see it. So she was like, I'm sure I mailed it out. I don't know why it's not there yet. And then she found it. So it ended up getting here like two weeks late. Mm. And since that was my first paycheck, that was uh, an inconvenience. But oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been working here. Where's my paycheck? Uh, you got it already, huh? It should be there. <laughs> what's What's the issue? What do you mean? <laughs> and and this is there's there's some lore here because last time Chandler was on he was looking to uh, furnish his place. Uh, I am still looking the, to furnish my place. Did, oh, well, what I'm getting is maybe the paycheck delay uh, impacted that sort of timeline. No, it absolutely did for sure. I I I so I was going to get a futon earlier um, because right because back then the only things I had to sit on were two Walmart chairs. Excellent. Um, I mean, I still have the Walmart chairs. They're great. But uh, I now have two big comfy chairs 
that I got for free because my parents are in a a Facebook group for their like suburban little neighborhood and people just give stuff away like all the time. And I'm like, why can't I get in on this nonsense? And so they just tell me about whatever pops up. And so I got two chairs for free. They're like nice chairs. Very um, nice. I still am going to get a futon, but that's going to be like my Christmas present to myself. Excellent. Yeah, I so when I first moved out years or so ago, um, my first place that I was on my own, I knew that I wasn't going to be there forever. And so I was like, eh, I don't want to, I'm going to have to move eventually. So I'm not going to furnish the shit. I'm going to do the bare bones, try to get by. Because it's like, well, I'm going to do the apartment life. I'm going to be hopping apartments every year. And what I realized was that was a terrible decision. Because you go Mm -hmm. home and it doesn't feel like home. Right? Mm -hmm. You go home to, I went home to a damn desk chair and a desk, basically. And then, you know, a bed. That was about it. Now, it made moving easier, but goddamn, it was so sterile in there. And, you know, I was under the impression, you know what? I escaped a family of people who had too much shit on their hands. I'm going to try the the monastic life. I'm going to try the, uh, you know, don't have anything because, you know, focus on me and focus on the career and that stuff. And, <laughs> the hashtag grind you know, set. The, 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 the Sigma grind set or whatever <laughs> you fucking, yeah. <laughs> but anyway... So after the Sigma grind set hits in, you know, you, you get a couple weeks in that, and it's like, wow, I'm living in a sterile fucking pillbox apartment. Like, what am I doing? And so, you know, next place was like, all right, I'm going to break down and get some damn furniture, <laughs> put some posters on the wall, put some LEDs up or something, mm-hmm. something that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I I really don't know how long I'm going to be here. I, I, I'm planning on staying with the uh, – with the company I'm at for at least a, you know, a year or two. Um, so, you know, for now, this, it's like, if I'm going to be here for at least, you know, 365 days, then I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to, going to fill it up with some stuff. And in any case, like, you know, if I do need to move somewhere, my family's only in Birmingham, like they will probably come help me, A, and B, I got a Tahoe. <laughs> that can fit a lot of stuff in it. Oh, yeah. No, that's really good for moving, for sure. sure. Uh, you know, I got some bulky furniture and stuff, but at the end of the day, I, w- I would rather deal with moving it than deal with, you know, coming home to what feels like a hotel room, like, every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, that life is not for you long term. Just for nobody. So, I, God, I have fallen out of touch with damn near all the trumpets, except the people Daniel has kept me in touch with. Uh, how do you keep in touch with anybody from uh, from the band days, or uh, the... some definitely to some degree? I'm still I still stick around in the um, in the the I don't know why I'm still in the big fan chat honestly. <laughs> but oh, I trumpet, am too. The, the and... trumpet chat specifically, uh, I, 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 I stick around in. I um, I will say someone someone recently told me that they the reason. You kind of get stuck because you become more noticeable if you do leave. That, that is oh. very true. Because like once you leave, it's like a betrayal. Well, I'd like say even still in it well, as well. I think. Yeah, it, it it makes an announcement. This person has left the chat. Yeah, it's like it's too much attention. You know, you get stuck. Well, I think for me, honestly, like I'll open it every now and then, and it's like, oh damn, I missed that. It's like almost like a subconscious wanting to, ah, shit, you know, it's it's a Saturday night. Why am I not in a uniform, right? Why are we not fucking marching uh, the 75th iteration of the same damn pregame thing we did for <laughs> hundreds of times? Ugh. Yeah, like, there, hmm. There's a couple. For first of all, I I am still like so like my roommates, my old roommates are still all at tech. So like it's fun seeing them in the big chat. Uh, just like D- Dan talks like way more than I would expect him to in the big chat, and it's just kind of entertaining to see what he says. Um, Dan is very online for 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 our listeners. We're not talking about me, but Dan is. We're talking about a different name, but he's very online as compared to. 
in person. Yeah, like like in person, he does not seem like the kind of I don't know. He just and I and like you know I know a decent amount about Dan and like it, if you didn't see him on Group Me, you just wouldn't think he would be speaking as much. I don't know. Yeah, like he's one of those people who could go a whole like week without talking to anyone in person. Hmm. But but then like and the, and, and to be then like to be like be perfectly content with that. Like he's not like he's not yeah like, yeah, yeah. like but then he'll, but then he'll just like nonstop chat on, on like a group chat or whatever. Yeah. Like, he sends these long paragraphs because he, 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 I, they do very much sound like Dan though, because he very much like wants to say exactly what he wants. He like never wants to be misconstrued. So like every time he sends anything, it's like three paragraphs long, which is fine. It's just, it's like, yeah, that's Dan, all right. Uh, I'm. <laughs> My goodness, that that does remind me. Um, I don't know. That that just seems like embedded fear, honestly. How how so exactly? Well, so you know, one of the things I've been doing recently is you know, I, I got into a whole bunch of basically trauma work. Is what it's called, mm. right? So you process your childhood traumas, your whatever. It's like, it's therapy, basically. It's yeah, no, that's in, some, in some different form. But one thing that I realized was how much of the stuff that was put in you as a kid or as a young adult or even as an adult you internalize will manifest in these bizarre behaviors. Like, you know, you're talking about this guy who writes three paragraphs so that he's not misconstrued. When I heard that, I heard of a guy who something happened where maybe he slipped up with his speech or something and somebody just absolutely lit into him or somebody freaked out or something bad happened. And he was like, oh, Jesus Christ, did I fuck that person up or something? I mean, that that's that just to me is the hallmark of that, because I don't know, I've always uh, I've had similar issues, but, you know, not the paragraph thing, but I've had, you know, what I call programming, right? You know, use mm-hmm. a computer analogy. When you're programmed emotionally, um, you just get these weird behaviors that start popping up. And, you know, some of them are more benign, let's be real, like typing a paragraph out, although see where that goes. Yeah. And then, you know, you get the, the dark shit, like drug abuse and things get even darker from there but you know yeah it's uh it's really powerful stuff not gonna lie and um you know it's it's something to it's something to consider whenever you know when i'm when i'm talking friends in real life or whatever and i just notice these moments it's like well you ever consider that the way you're doing this is because you told me about your belief that you have connected to this emotion that you have that you you know Learn when you were 12, something like that. Mm. And you know, I never, I truthfully never believed in that stuff until I went through it myself. And I was like, oh my God, this is real. <laughs> oh, that was that, for sure. Today on therapy. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> let me just ruin the fucking tone of this podcast. No, you're, you're totally fine. No, sure. Let's just, let's just, let's just get into the weeds, shall we? For, no, but like, I mean, I don't want to psychoanalyze Dan, but, like, you certainly have a point, and, like, I mean, I've been in therapy. I certainly kind of, like, you know, at least on a, you know, baseline. I wasn't in therapy for very long. The it, the the guy that I was with just didn't really vibe with me. Like, oh. he was fine. Um, but, so, I, I've been looking for someone else. Um Also, like, at the time, like, so many life things were happening where I was, like, Strangely, I just don't have time for this. Um, so anyway, I'm looking for someone else. But I, I certainly, at least on a baseline level, like when you when you are small and like impressionable when you're young, like certainly, like e- even things like you look back and you like look at it, it's like, oh, that's just kind of like a weird thing that happened, or like, oh, that's just kind of a funny memory. It's like, no, you. you Think about it some more. You might, you, you never know where that rabbit hole is going to lead. Like it's, th- things affect you more than you think. 
Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Any uh, any input on that, Daniel? You ever been to therapy, Daniel? Tell us all of your secrets. <laughs> uh, I have. Uh, honestly, I haven't been to therapy. Maybe I should have. You know. So. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, to be honest, I mean, you know, I I say when I brought that up, it's like because I've dealt with really dark shit from my past, but mm-hmm. yeah, therapy isn't for everybody, and it certainly is a matter of timing. Right. It's like when you feel like your life is at a point where because for me it was, OK, my life has hit this this point where I'm alone. It's just me and I feel like shit. Why is that? And that's kind of what started it for me. So it was time for me. But mm-hmm. for, for some people, you know, it's like, well, I got my career going on right now because, you know, shit therapy, you know, working on yourself, especially if you've got fucked up shit in your past. That's going to take a lot of your time. It's going to take a tremendous amount of your time, depending on how much you have. So, yeah. you know, it's it's yeah, all money, from, if you're not if, if you don't have the right insurance and you don't have a lot of like that's the main thing. I can't find any damn therapists that work for me in my in, in the in this area that take the insurance that I have. And even when I have insurance, it's not cheap. You know, that, that's yeah. really a big deal. And so, like, I totally get it when people are like, oh, I want to go to therapy. Sorry, I just kind of cut you off there, but like I just—I oh, no, no, no. I, I had an emotion, and I was like, I must express this. Oh no, that's good. That's good, by the way. <laughs> Honestly, um, but yeah, no, it's it's, and so I had a um, I tried that uh BetterHelp service. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's like an <laughs> online. I, I get the ads all the time. Yeah, I try. I was like, oh, well, might as well fucking try this one. I'm on. I'm in the weeds, so why not? I tried that and. Like you said, I got two people, neither of them vibed with me, and so I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right, I'm going to cancel, right? Mm. However, you know, some people it might work for. You know, it, it seemed a little by the numbers to me, which is why it was not what I was looking for, but maybe it works for some people. But, you know, I, I, th- I really feel like when you're dealing with – because this isn't a logical thing, right? Like your logic is a tool – when it comes to dealing with your stuff, but when you're dealing with these emotions and when you're dealing with your, you know, your past stuff, um, what really has to happen is this has to be kind of a feeling and intuitive journey. And, you know, as, as someone who did science for his entire life, you know, very left brain, if you want to call it that way, that was foreign to me. That was a completely whatever concept. So I had to get in touch with my emotional side to do it. And I learned, okay, when something doesn't feel right, usually because it isn't, right? There's something wrong. <laughs> that, 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 that is very true. It, it's a very, like, um, for every person, it, there is a specific, like, there's always a solution, but it's never going to be quite exactly the same. Like, I, you know, people are like, oh, therapy just doesn't work for me. And sometimes that is because you just haven't found the right therapist, but sometimes it's like, there is there needs to be something else right like maybe it's medication maybe it's something personal like meditation like some like for some people like i i know a lot of people like i can't tell you how many therapists i've tried it just hasn't nothing has happened and it's like okay then then some other solution needs to be applied here oh yeah and there's there are solutions out there that people dismiss almost because they're being taught you know, oh, that's that's nonsense. Why would that work? Mm. And it's actually what you might need, right? Because it's a different approach to your body, a different approach to your mind. And that's a way that, you know, because everybody is going to be a little bit different. Everybody's going to have, you know, if you, people who have, I will say, like these emotional image, you know, issues, this emotional damage, whatever you want to call it, trauma, et cetera. Everyone's a little bit different, so the cookie cutter solution doesn't work. You gotta tailor it to an individual. And for some people, that's not gonna be sit down with a therapist with a clipboard and say, okay, here is, this is the root of your trauma from your childhood, and this is why you act this way, and all that, you know, that sometimes the clinical perspective just isn't gonna work for you, right? And, you know, then you have to explore other options. Mm, for sure. 
Um, and like, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly how to phrase this. Like, e even more than just like, you know, people say like, oh, you just need to go to therapy. Like, you know, you, you people just kind of put that out there. And it's like, in a lot of cases, like, you know, that is technically true. But all right. And, and I'll, so let me just speak from personal experience here. Like, um, my mother is a therapist. Like, my mother does therapy for people. Um, okay. So she has a very particular way of, like, you know, speaking and, like, talking to me about whatever might happen. Um, and but, but what that basically means is, like, I, you know, I, I talked with a couple of, um, you know, therapists that were women, and I immediately was just like, I can't. I can't. You just sound like my mother, which is, uh. it isn't, isn't necessarily mean that, like, there's an issue with them or, like, an issue with me and my mother. It's just like, mm. this will not be productive if it just sounds like I'm talking to my parents. That There needs to be something else here. And something as simple as that, and now I have, you know, functionally half of all, more than half, because most therapists are, are women in my experience. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like maybe, I don't, I don't know the exact percentage, but maybe 70% of therapists out of the door because that's just something I, just because of some random happenstance, and now I can't do that. It, it, it is, uh, you know, you know, shows how something so, you know, simple can kind of narrow the playing field. And it's like, and I can't even imagine if there were more, you know, kind of deeper issues with, you know, certain people of certain, you know, you know, if you had an issue, issues with men, issues with women, issues with mm -hmm. other things, like, I can't even imagine how much harder it would make that search. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, so, well, I, I, I'll i share, um, if you'll hit me up after this podcast, seriously, uh, I can share some more details about it with you. But um, just in general, you know, I think it's about finding someone who feels right for you. Mm -hmm. And that might, that, that could be a certain type of person, right? You know, it could be a man resonates with you more. And that's kind of the way that you would need to approach it. And, and for some people, you know, it could be, it's just all about matching to a person because ultimately what a therapist is going to try to do is the therapist is going to try to, first of all, let you vent and hear that, you that out. That is so important. Oh, but that I would argue, important. I would argue, frankly, that's the most important part. Yeah. Um, and then, once you've vented and you can be more objective, then you can say, okay, well, that's why I'm this way or that's why I behave that way. And now moving forward, how do I make my life better? And unfortunately, yeah. I think some people are in the therapy business. Um, you know, just to keep people in the damn therapy business, right? Keep people in the loop. And that is that. I mean, thankfully, uh, you know, the therapist I had before, he, I did end up getting therapy with, with, um, with a man, and he was like, he 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 very clearly was like, please, like, do not, like, you know, and I kind of talked to him like, I think this may not be for me. He was like, please don't keep coming to me if you need someone else. He he was very nice about it. He wasn't trying to like keep me for my money or anything like. He, he, he mentioned, like, there are, you gotta be careful. There are some people out there that are just gonna try to kind of, you know, keep pulling, pulling the rope, see, see how far they can get. Yeah, and it's all about when you're ready, right? Because mm -hmm. if your therapist doesn't respect that, okay, today I've talked enough, uh, it is time to stop, and they wanna keep going. You know, that, that can be quite emotionally exhausting for both of the people involved. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there's also the therapist who sometimes you got to push. Sometimes the the patient is not going to want to deal with something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, that's not an issue of timing then. It's an issue of it's so uncomfortable for you that you need someone to give you that tiny push, right? Mm -hmm. 
it, it does it does require external motivation sometimes for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it, it in my head, the kind of way I I, I don't know frame it is like. It's like it's it's like it's like working out, but for your like emotions, right? It's Absolutely. Like, and I, it, because it, it's just the same idea of like I completely understand how people do not have the time and the energy to like go to the gym like you know like four times a week. It's like yeah, it takes like an hour, and even after the hour, you're tired and exhausted, and you don't want to do anything because you've just <laughs> talked about your childhood for however long and that's just it's so much more effort than it seems than you know way more effort than you would think from just you know technically just having a conversation with someone okay yeah well like i said uh hit me up after this i can definitely i have a honestly a wellspring of experience so but anyway sure. On, anyway, <laughs> on lighter 30, topics, 30 minutes, into the 30 minutes of just <laughs> We've of the realest shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god. Well, Daniel, we've uh, we've done it again. Now, would you prefer <laughs> would you prefer this or the the random NFL talk for three hours? Bring up the, bring uh, up the questions. So, how know. about them Falcons? <laughs> Yeah. How 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 about the rumor that George Tech is going to hire that Tulane coach? Uh, okay, I'm out of the loop again. Damn, who is this? Chase, this is breaking news. It, it literally oh was my God. Like 45 minutes ago. Yeah, it was like less than an hour before we started recording this. Uh, oh, seriously? But then they took it back, and I, you know what? Let's bring it. Uh, this, is, this is a callback here. Dan mentioned in the group chat that. Uh, they're probably waiting on an announcement of a hire until uh, Tulane finishes all their games this year. Mm. I see. Is this the Tulane coach? Willie something? Hold on, let me it, it Literally, I just have to go to the band chat. <laughs> Fair enough. I should pull the damn thing up. What am I doing? Uh, Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, I'll let you figure it out. Willie Fritz is his name. Apparently, he's pretty good. Tulane's a really good football team right now, so and like I, I, I it, it seems like the the reason that they chose him, if they did in fact choose him, this is all still rumored, um, but because it was building a program out of somewhere with high academic standards from kind of the ground up, hmm. um, and someone with experience there. So, who knows? Because I, I really would like to start over. <laughs> with oh Jackson. God! I mean, it's it's gonna be. I I struggle to see how you get worse from Jeff Collins, frankly. Um, I think it's very true. You know, there's the. It's hard to imagine getting worse, and so I'm interested in seeing. I don't know anything about this person, but you know. Hey, successful G5. You know, that's the, that seems to be the pipeline, honestly, is okay. You did your one year, you, you get the moment you have like one good year in a G5 school. Oh, time to hire you for a mm-hmm. P5 team. And, uh. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So, uh, you know, let me, let me give you my hot take. I mean, he's hot had take. success. Hot take from Daniel, everyone. He's, <laughs> he's had success, uh, at other schools, smaller schools. He was at Jorah Southern for like two years. So I don't know how much he. You count that. But if you don't count the bowl games, okay, which, like, uh, yeah, I'm cheating a little, but he won a couple bowl games, okay? But if you don't count those, he had – the most wins he had had in the season before this year was six. Mm. And that's and, – and this isn't a small sample thing, too. He, that's six years before this year. Ooh. And last year, they were two and ten. Ooh. Oh, I So what know. are we – what are we doing here, people? Okay, I'm sure he's a great guy. You know, again, he's been around forever. He's 60, is he 62? Yeah, he's 62. Oh. Mm. That's awesome. Um, so he's got the, the hashtag experience. Okay, mm-hmm. like I said, he's, he's, he's close to a bunch of different places. I don't know, a bunch, but a few different places. And I'm sure he's a great guy. This isn't personal. But like, you know, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Okay, this <laughs> feels like a, an easy choice. That looks good and, and is looking at this year 
and like you know especially college football there's there's a lot of variance oh yeah I think. um so and like obviously i don't think he's as bad as like the 2 and 10 record last year but the 10 and 2 record this year or i don't know if that counts Does that count to this yeah. yeah um the 10 and 2 record this year you know obviously he's somewhere in between probably which is this you know the 6 and 6 teams that he's been putting up the oh, previous yeah. three years yeah for sure so like yeah. Well, I, 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 my personal preference would have been the Coastal Carolina guy. Mm-hmm. I think that's maybe that's too close to Jeff Collins. Well, that's, I mean, I guess for me, the person I'd like somebody who is gonna be like an advantage, a true advantage, like strategically or in the game, right? Because mm-hmm. you're gonna have to leverage talent that isn't the best talent, regardless. And you can, you can draft, draft, Jesus, recruit, <laughs> I wish you could draft. Um, you can recruit, you know, better than Paul Johnson did, right? And mostly like Jeff Collins was a reasonable recruiter for the most part. Um, but you're never gonna have the elite tier athletes unless you mm-hmm. get really lucky. So, you're always going to need somebody, I, I almost think like an Andy Reid for college, right? Like someone who is just like, ah, screw it. Let's run a quad for me. Let's run quads to the boundary. Why not? You know, like someone like that. And I don't know, I, I don't know what the advantage like, is of like, hiring. Like a Lincoln, Ry- a Lincoln Riley well, type? Well, Lincoln idea. Riley, I mean, <laughs> you get someone idea. like that and he's gone immediately. That's That's the other issue, but. The the thing is, you want, or what I would want, is a guy who is going to be like, well, let's find the best, like, uh, you know how, like, Bill Belichick always turns his defense from, like, all right, well, these guys suck to begin the year, but now they're going to find a role, and they're going to play that role, and they'll have, like, these role player, you know, types on the defense, and their whole defense is made out of role players, aside from their corners, and that's kind of what I'd like to see on, you know, on a Georgia Tech team is like, okay, yeah, we get it. These guys, they might only be good at one thing and they're good is relative, right? But, you know, let's use the talent to their fullest potential at what they're good at. And if that's lining it up at fullback, fine. If that's running the quarterback more, that's fine. You know, if that's playing, uh, you know, if our cornerback needs to play in off coverage as opposed to press, you know, that that kind of coaching. And I just feel like a lot of coaches have their way. It's like, you're going to fit into our scheme. You're going to fit into what we're doing. Or you have these like rah, rah culture guys who are like, we're going to play with juice and energy, you know, the Jeff Collins approach. It's like, well, that's great. You don't know what you're doing on the field. So wonderful. So I don't know. Those are also very rare to find at least at the college level, because if you find one that that coach is gone right <laughs> like, yeah. they're going to alabama as a position coach for a while something like that uh well so first of all i'm gonna say y'all apparently know more about football than i do because <laughs> i i'm very much just an extremely passive observer with all of this like <laughs> but i my extremely tepid take um is that honestly out of, like, I, I really don't think that anyone is going to be, like, a truly terrible choice. We just need some, and I think another reason, I, I saw that another reason that they might pick the um, the guy from Tulane is uh, he's looking to, probably looking to retire pretty soon because he's rather old. So probably a really, you know, relatively short contract. Just get everything back on its feet, and then we can go from there. You know what I mean? Instead of having to maybe commit to someone out of nowhere, and then if they're not what we're looking for, then we're kind of stuck with them. Or we have to back out again, which we already, you know, dumped so much money on the buyout for Jeff Collins that I don't think they're looking to do that. That's another thing that I – if for no other reason, like, I agree with you in the sense that Tech needs to stop handing out six-year contracts. Mm -hmm. You would have thought the 10-year – Paul Hewitt contract or whatever that was, like, 
how the hell are you going to do that again? Okay, we're going to use six-year <laughs> contract. Let, let, let's not you had six years because otherwise you'll somehow leave. And it's like, well, guys, they're going to leave anyway because they, if they're really talented, they will be bought out by a really you know expensive program. And if they're not, you're stuck with a patsy for six years. You're fucked. So, mm-hmm. and then you, or you fire him four years, then you have to buy him, or three years, then you have to buy him out. So, give him like a two-year trial run. I tell you what, and if we see progress in year two, we renew, right? Mm-hmm. But I would be if I'm tax AD, I'm like, fuck the six-year garbage. Most I'll do is four. And mm-hmm. frankly, I I don't know if I would do four at this point because the the marketplace landscape is just like well. You know, if you're if you're gonna give if your ceiling is seven and five and a bowl loss, then I you know that's frankly we should expect more. I I have vague confidence, maybe it's unfounded that um, whatever contract does end up happening is not going to be that committal because you know this is Jay Bat guy from Alabama. He very much seems to be like a money focused guy. He did a lot of fundraising um, and just seems to be very aware of, like, you know, the financial side of things. So I find it unlikely that there's going to be much of any kind of big money drop out of nowhere. Unless necessary. I mean, you also have to consider, you know, if you want one of these really good coaches, what are they going to be requesting, right? Like, you may not be able to get any of these good coaches without – a more, you know, um, without a bigger contract, they may they may not they may not uh, take it on. Yeah. What is what is good at fundraising? I've, I've I've thought of this since since Bat was hired like a month ago. What does good at fundraising mean? Like, is he good at like planning parties? What what do we do? What- <laughs> Does he know honest, people? I don't really know. <laughs> what, like that's that's the the first thing you, you know you'll hear or read about with the, with the the new athletic director of Tech is great at fundraising. Let, let's do let's do a Google search. What 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 like, what, what, what? You know, I just imagine happen? I just imagine a guy in a suit at a fucking cocktail party schmoozing with like a politician. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> and maybe like stealing someone's wallet real quick and pull a hundo out of it, put it back. That kind of fun. Oh, he's holding a martini, you know, like it, <laughs> what? What is? The, I, I, I'm sure. You know, this, I'm sure there's those are reasonable answer to this. I'm just. It's like that's his strength. What does that mean? I guess that's a problem with Drew Tech. It is fundraising, so it, it makes sense. And, uh, Sorry, I'm I'm doing some googling. Uh, a 10-year, $600 million capital campaign at Alabama. Whatever that means. There you go. Apparently raised a lot of money somehow. I don't know. I guess you just call up a bunch of really wealthy people and ask them to give you money. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think more than anything, Georgia Tech's pre- – like. The the read the council the fucking whatever the <laughs> council <laughs> whoever whoever, whoever the committee got together to hire the athletic director they said he's from Alabama hire him right <laughs> I mean it's I mean, not a it's, it's like you a, have a degree a from MIT board. hire you I well no. like. I don't know. Anytime it's like, oh, they worked yeah. at Alabama, they must be good. Jeff Collins worked at Alabama for a couple of years, and look what happened. Ah, he formed Saban's bench for a couple minutes. Yeah. Guys, I have I have more breaking news. More breaking news. Oh shit. Breaking news. Which again, huh? by the time this comes out, it is not breaking anymore. Ancient history. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Tech's Jeff Sims has entered the transfer portal. Oh Ooh. yeah, I saw oh, that. No. Damn. Uh, uh, I mean, I saw it coming. The, the teams. Well, he just he's, he's announcing that he will enter. It doesn't mean he is entering. It doesn't mean he's transferring. So it's like a, it's like an announcement for an announcement kind of a thing. But yeah. Um, oh no. But, Social uh, media. Well, I mean, I guess I don't blame him. I mean, if I was stuck well, with whatever the fuck this offense was for three years, I'd be pissed. <laughs> 
And yeah, I'm he, sure. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sure he's seeing Justin Fields in the NFL and is like, why can't I do that? Mm. Right. And I again, mean, like, well, <laughs> you've been you've been in an offense that has been I I don't I don't exactly know how to describe Tex offense other than utterly and uh, completely dysfunctional. <laughs> For well, except for a well, rare few what's moments. What's the I, name is slipping my mind right now? The the we we had he went to Alabama, like he transferred to Alabama. Oh, Jameer Gibbs. Yes, it is so good seeing. It's like I am I am so happy for you. Like, please go go show off your skills in a, in a program that you can <laughs> kind of do it with. Do you know how many people will say to me, like friends, family, they'll be like, man, this Jameer Gibbs guy is good. I mean, where did he come from? He's out of nowhere. I'm like, <laughs> behind on this. <laughs> we know. We know how good he is. He was They're already like, man, he's good. good. He's going to tell you. It's like, oh, boy. Oh, my God. And yeah. seeing PH3's punt on the Steelers, oh. Like, I, yeah. Like, have you seen that, like, perfect, like, one-yard punt that he did that one time? Oh yeah, yeah, no, he's like, damn like, good. Like landed right on the line. Oh, gorgeous. I mean, we got <laughs> our our school apparently produced, uh, you know, top five punter and kicker in the NFL. So we got that going for us. <laughs> what what more could you want? <laughs> they get to do I mean, it a lot, you know. It's a lot of practice. I mean, a natty would be nice, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> we've still got more than Georgia. Oh. Until maybe this year. <laughs> nah, I was gonna say. Well, I don't see if it's there. We'll see if they what can happens. see if they can back to back. You know, I guess they're favored, but weird shit always happens. Weird, weird shit does does always happen. Us leading in the first quarter of the Georgia game was was weird shit. Wasn't that incredible? <laughs> Unfortunately, we uh, uh, you know. You can only keep that up for so long, but you know the dream was there, if if but for a short time. Even most of the first half, I, I didn't see the second half. I was I was on a plane, but mm. most of the first half it was somewhat competitive, which I think is like is a win our, this year. Our defense really yeah. was balling out, like for like pretty much this entire season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the team definitely, the team definitely got lucky to get to five wins, but they were at least competitive instead of like even earlier this year when it was you could just book like a thirty point loss to oh, God, these yeah. teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think all I, the wins. I, I, I would like, so much like rather take uh, like. Six or seven win season with a couple of random ranked wins in there just to cause chaos than what's been happening the past three years. Yeah. Uh, what else you guys got? Watch from George Tech football cause chaos. Yeah, it's all it's all chilling. That's all. All right. Well, it, anything else, guys? I hope you've enjoyed the experience podcast with me and someone else. There you go. Brandon. Chase, anything? Okay. Nope, Chase is gone. (laughs) Goodbye.